evidence that you could give saying that this would not be a good decision? Because it's, I mean, what is banning a book? Really knowledge. Well, yeah, but what 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 is it? I mean, it's a First Amendment thing, but it's also it's your freedom of expression. You are you are the library would be taking away someone's right to learn and express themselves. Um, it's the road to fascism. If someone and some people say something like, um, or uh, you, have you, you had started reading um, Huck Finn yet, right? A lot of places wanted to ban Huck Finn. People wanted to ban Huck Finn for a number of reasons. Some because they don't like it using the N word. Some because they think it um, <laughs> fosters, um, you know, um, rebellion and kids and stuff. What's the What's the most famous book that was written in the I guess I guess it's the early '60s that a lot of places didn't want to have written by uh, J. D. Salinger. Salinger, uh, Catching the Rye. How many of you guys have read Catching the Rye? Yeah, when I was in, if you haven't read Catching the Rye, you should. I used to call myself Holden Coffee. I, was, I thought I was like a pissed off smart kid who didn't want to listen to people. In the end, that's like most smart kids, right? But um, yeah, people didn't like that because they thought he was going to you start questioning things. People who hold reins of power don't like it when people read and learn and question. It's a dangerous process for them. This is what's happening to Sal. They don't want people reading Uncle Tom's Cabin. They don't want people internalizing what slavery really is. And they don't want to have poor white people know that they're also getting screwed over. Um, I mean, what other books do you know that have been banned? Why would they ban To Kill a Mockingbird? Doesn't that kind of promote racial tolerance? And I think also they banned Alice through the Looking Glass because it was like, it would promote LSD or something. Um, yeah, well, has anyone read The Wizard of Oz? It's a lot different than it's a lot different than the movie, right? The book is way different. Um, it's it's a little bit utopian, right? Utopian socialist books. I mean, there are schools that don't want. I mean, there are schools that don't want Zen being read, right? I mean, think about the books that I'm making you guys read. Zen, what's right there? Wizard of Oz, The Jungle, which is written by a socialist. Um, the, the Soul of Black Folk, I don't have you guys read that anymore, also written by a socialist. Black. For a while, do what? Black Like Me, right. Um, a lot of these books have been questioned. It's fun to read crap that people don't want. goes into start fighting on the frontier in Kansas 
anti-slavery people versus pro-slavery people, and it's getting really, really ugly. In fact, and I'm going to go down a little bit to the Potawatomi Massacre, John Brown, um, John Brown, you know who John Brown is? He's later going to get caught at Harper's Ferry trying to start a slave revolt. He was desperately anti-slavery. He and his sons thought God had ordained him to stop slavery at any cost. At Potawatomi, he and his followers took broadswords, especially like big machete things, and hacked five people to death. That's a bad way to die for keeping score at home. And he saw himself as doing God's work. What's the problem when people see themselves as doing God's work? They think that whatever they do has been ordained, therefore is morally right, therefore is justifiable, therefore they will continue to do it. And both the North and the South are claiming God, right? That's also dangerous when both sides claim God. Um, Potawatomi, it's in Kansas. This is um, in reaction, by the way, you know where Lawrence, Kansas is? It's where University of Kansas is. Um, Pro-slavery, they were called border ruffians from Missouri, came over and killed many anti-slavery people in Lawrence. So you got deaths in Lawrence. You got hacked up people in Potawatomi. Both sides now have blood on their hands. And it goes into Congress. In fact, in 1856, this is one of the funniest things. In fact, I'm going to get a cane that's going to help discuss this. This cane is a little bit more aggressive. The steel cage match between Sumner and Brooks. Charles Sumner was a senator from Massachusetts. And he got up in the Senate... And he began um, railing on the South, the crimes against Kansas. Lashed out, he's insulting Southern senators. He's insulting the South. He's calling them devious and wicked. And a congressman from South Carolina named Preston Brooks went down into the, into the chamber with a cane... A cane that had an 11 ounce gold head on it and beat him 30 times in Congress. Now, this is about 11 ounces. Now, I want you to feel what this feels like getting hit 30 times by somebody doing this to you. You can pass that around. If you're keeping track at home, that sucks. No, but he put him in uh, the hospital for a long, long time. Preston Brooks gets asked, he quits Congress, he's asked to leave, and then the people of South Carolina vote him back almost unanimously. And Sumner ends up winning his election again, the North standing up against the South. This might be the first, one of the first casualties of the Civil War with Charles Sumner. I mean, think about this. You're having congressmen and senators beat each other in Congress over what's being said. Now, our Congress today doesn't get along that well, but we're not here yet. Right? Comma, yet. I don't know if Ted Cruz will be the guy bashing somebody or he'll be the bashed. Probably. Um, all right, so now the question is, is Kansas in the end going to end up being slave? Because remember, they haven't voted yet, right? The people of Kansas haven't voted yet. And so they're, they're going to vote on the Constitution. This Constitution will determine whether or not they're going to have slavery. And the Constitution was called the Lee Compton Constitution. And the South Southern sympathizers wrote this. And I'm going fast. I'm trying to get so you guys have all this stuff. Them. Southern sympathizers wrote this. Yes. What did the other other congressmen do while that dude was beating the crap out of the other dude with cane? 
I think the southern senator and the southern people cheered. I think the north got Brooks off of Sumner. After 30 minutes? Well, but you got to understand. It's a cane. Yeah, I mean, you got to understand that you, they didn't see this coming, right? I mean, so the, the, the um, having surprise on your side probably got him quite a few uh, pretty good licks in. And then by the time these guys got out of their chair and made their way down and tried to avoid getting hit themselves, he got quite a few licks in. I wasn't there. I don't have it on tape, but I'm from what I know, that's what happened. Um, it, was, whoa. Uh, it was it was stopped. Um, but people, by the way, all over the South started sending Brooks canes in the mail. He had a bunch of canes that Southerners were so happy that he beat up this poor guy. Yeah. It's not why I have a cane. No, I've beat up nobody. I'm old for my life. I've never started a fight or been in a fight. I got punched on the street of Louisville one time. A kid, one of my, I was a kid, this other kid came to me and one of my baseball cards I had with me. I was going to buy some at a baseball card shop. And I said no. And he punched me in the face and then ran across the street. It was really weird. He didn't even take your baseball <laughs> cards. Really yeah, he didn't have baseball cards. Anyway, he didn't have that big of a hit. He was like, he was like, give me your cards. And I went, no. He went, and he hit me and ran across. He was like 11, and I was like 11 or 12, and he ran across um, Barstown Road. Didn't even look. Um, it was really weird. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the Lee Conley Constitution. This is the vote to see whether or not they were going to have slavery. But this, this is just in Kansas, right? This is the Constitution they're going to vote on. And they, the Southerners, wrote the Lee Compton Constitution, and this is what it said. People are not allowed to vote for or against the Constitution as a whole, but voted for the Constitution with or without slavery. And here's what that is. You couldn't vote for the Constitution as a whole. You could only vote for a Constitution with or without slavery. But the slaves that were already there were going to stay either way. Remember I said there were already some slaves there? So if you voted for slavery, then slavery was extended. If you voted for no slavery, there were already slaves there, which essentially made it a slave state. Slave state. So therefore, what was going to be the, either way, what was going to happen? There were going to be slaves. Either way, there was going to be slaves. And so free soilers, you can understand what free soilers are, right? People who did not want to extend slavery. They refused to participate in this. They refused to participate in the Lee Compton Constitution. And in the end, the Lee Compton Constitution wasn't considered valid. And Kansas ends up just staying a territory. And later, during the Civil War, we'll go in on the side of the North. But what is our, what's the what's the, what's the importance of Kansas in this? It's a major point of contention. This is yeah, it's bleeding Kansas. It's called the Kansas Civil War, right? The Potawatomi Massacre, Lawrence, Lee County Constitution. This is a small little microcosm of the Civil War beginning to start. And it does not get through Congress. And it remains a territory. And so what ends up happening um, is the Democratic Party ends up being split. You end up now having Northern Democrats and Southern Democrats. And do the modern Democrats stand for the Northern Democrats? No, not really. We'll get to that. I mean, um, sort of, but not really. Um, in fact... The Democratic Party was really the, were, were Whigs popular in the South, do you think? No. There were Democrats in the North. This is like the one thing left that our country had, the North and the South both participated in, was the Democratic Party. And then by 1860, it's going to be gone. Well, the election of 1856, you can see that the uh, James Buchanan is an attorney from Pennsylvania. I think. Oh, by the way, I was wrong. Franklin Pierce is actually from New Hampshire, not from Vermont. How sad am I when I learned that? I forgot about that. So there's only five famous people. Yeah, apparently by famous from Vermont now. I could have swore he was. I still don't know if I believe all the evidence has been put out in front of me. I'm like, 
I'm like those um, birthers who still believe that Obama was born somewhere else, regardless of how much evidence there is. Um, so Buchanan was chosen over Pierce. Where are you from? Pennsylvania. So he's again another northern Democrat who had southern sympathy, so he can get the, the southern vote and some northern Democrats. He supported popular sovereignty. The Republicans nominated John uh, Fremont. Where do we know him from? He was actually the guy that he was the guy that took over. Yeah, he was a general. He was an admiral. He took over. Um, no, he was a he was general. He's the guy who took over California. He's seen as the founder of California. Uh, Fremont is. In fact, he's the first Republican. He's the first Republican presidential nominee. 1856 is the first time. And remind me again, why did the Republican Party start as a result of Canada, Nebraska? All right. Also, again, there's another nativist party that came back, the Know Nothing Party. Remember we talked about that? The Know Nothing Party was represented by Millard Fillmore, who had actually been president before. How many of you ever seen a movie called Gangs of New York? All right, one or two of you.